Hi, I'm Kevin with Rockbridge Windmills. Today we're going to put together a windmill wheel. And I'm going to show you a little bit about it, a couple of uh, tips that we use to make it a little easier for everybody. And this is a standard air motor style wheel. It's been in production forever. If you have an 1897 open gear air motor windmill, this would be the same wheel. The only difference is we're going to bolt it together. In the old days, they did hot rivets. So a couple of things you're going to need for the project. You need some nuts and bolts that are here in the pile. You have the sail ribs. These are the sail ribs. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that on the end of it, it has a built up edge. And we're one of the few people that still do that because we hot dip galvanize everything. So this goes into molten zinc and comes back out. And then these are the sail clips. And the same thing, they're hot dip galvanized. A lot of people call these the blades. Technically, we like to call them the sails. So here's the sail, hot dip galvanized. You can see it's got a little bit of a rough surface to it. Notice there's a clip here, the hole, another clip and a tapered edge. This is the inter wheel band. So it's the inside small wheel band. This is the larger outside wheel band. Don't worry, we're going to explain all this to you so you know what it is. The first thing that we're going to do though, is we're going to clean all our parts. And I put out a wheel arm here for you. People call these spokes, but we call them wheel arms because you need to do the same thing. And the very first thing we need to do is we need to take this drift or tapered piece and clean all of these holes. Because when they go into the hot dip galvanizing, there's a little bit of material left over. It's called dross. Built. And then we need to clean up the inside edge here. So we're going to do that. We're going to take a couple of minutes, go through all the parts and get everything cleaned up. And then we'll move on to the assembly. Okay, so one of the real important things to do is to take your wheel bands, both the outside and inside, and if you'll notice, there's the two holes here, the bigger holes, and those are the holes that the wheel arms are going to go through. And then these are going to hold the sails on. And it's really important that you understand that you get them all facing the same way. Because if you look at this end, you'll see the distance between the big holes where the wheel arms are and the distance here where the sail band is, is a different between both ends. So this is further away. This is closer to the end. If you mix those up, if you do one one way and one the other, or get them backwards, it'll cause you a problem. It's the same thing here on the inside band, the distance between the big hole and the small hole. See how much difference there is? So let's just take a second, let's take a marking pen, and let's go down here to the end where there is a close between the small holes, and let's just put an X. And then let's take the next one we're going to do, and let's just put an X. And let's do that for all six wheel bands, because remember, we're going to put three blades together. They're going to go together. Six of those is going to make a complete windmill. Doesn't matter if it's a six foot windmill or a 16 foot windmill, it's still going to be the same. So give me a minute, I'll do that. Okay, so we went ahead and put the sail clips on here, pretty straightforward. Just put the two bolts through the front part here. You can see the curve. Clips on the back, the nuts are here. Pretty much can go on one way. So this is gonna be on the back side as you see the curve. Now the next part is we're gonna put the sail ribs on here. So these are the sail ribs. You notice there's a notch here. Ours are curved here, not everybody curves those out. We curve those so if you get a hairline crack started here, it won't come all the way out and the sail will fall off. So this is a little bit hard. You want to be wearing gloves. You want to be wearing safety glasses if you're going to start doing this. But we'll start off with curbside like this. We're going to clip it in here. We're going to start down on it. And we're going to tap it gently into place. So again, we've got a little bit of an angle. And we're just going to take our hammer and tap it a little bit. Tap it a little bit. And work our way down. So we're just working our way down until this clip falls in this hole. Okay, now you see that tilt? How when it got down there, it just tilted right in. So it tilted in. We can see it just starting to protrude out here a little bit. 
But notice this isn't all the way down, so we're going to give it a tap. And it's going to be a little loose. Now see this angle? We're going to grab Dad's old chisel. Don't use the good woodworking chisel for this. But we're just going to put it down in this slot, and we're just going to give it a little tap. There we go. So again, you can see it's a little bit of an angle, but don't worry, it's going to suck up tight. On the front part, just barely protruding out here, we're into our notches there. Remember these notches? So the cell rib fell right into place. So we're good. And we're going to do that three more times. So now we have our cell ribs on. We're going to take our wheel band, our outside wheel band, and remember that X we put on here. The one with the shortest distance between the bolt holes here and the wheel arms. We're going to have that in our left hand. We're going to have the curve this way, and we're just going to slip it right through. There. And we're going to do that three more times. So we'll go all three. There we go. And they're slipped on loosely. They're going to float around a little bit. And then we're going to move this to the first two small holes. So there we go. Now, if you have a problem with that, you can slip your drift in there and line that up. And then we're going to take one bolt and our nylox nut washers that are doing an incredible job, and we're going to bolt that on. And we're just going to repeat that process for all three sails. Don't tighten anything up until you're all done. There we go. So let's do that. Okay, so we've got the sail ribs going across the top. Now we're going to do the inner band. Remember our X, our shortest distance between the big hole and the small hole. Long distance here, short distance here. It's going to be the same as up there on the inner band. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a bolt through and have the nut on the back side. So we'll do that again, and we'll have a complete wheel section here. Okay, so we've tightened the top first. Then we tighten the bottom. It sort of pulled it all together tight. So here's what you should look like. Here's one wheel section. Curve side turns you. The short section here. This way. You see why we wanted that long section? See it out here? And there we go, folks. There's one wheel section. Now, some people are going to say that you should weigh the blades. If you're doing an 8 or a 10 foot windmill, you don't need to weigh the blades. You start getting into the really big, the 12s, the 16s. You want to weigh the blades and get the heaviest ones opposite of each other to balance the wheel. But she came together nice and tight and looking good. So, next up, let's put it on a windmill. 